Welcome everybody to today's IAPCNM CPD and Business Building Masterclass. My name is Julie Kennedy and I am your host. Today, I am really delighted to welcome our special guest speaker, social entrepreneur Pauline Sawaya, senior trainer and mentor coach, accredited master coach and business mentor with very many accomplishments to her name, as you can read in her bio, one of which is being the founder and the CEO of Swift Shift Coaching and Consultancy Limited, which is actually, if I understood well, the first globally accredited business by CPD in the region. And just always, I always ask for um, an interesting fact, and I can tell you it's one that's rather a big one. So um, Pauline actually survived the third biggest explosion in the world in 2020, moved to Cyprus and started from scratch building her business and introducing CPD to Lebanon. Now that's just to set the scene, right? Quite a lady. So yeah. welcome Pauline. Thank you for sharing your expertise and experience with us in this masterclass today. So our call will be a maximum of one hour, including 15 minutes Q&A. Um, and so the topic for today is coaching and social entrepreneurship. Now, I'm quite curious about this. So as always, I strongly suggest you grab a pen and your CPD pad so we can actually pop, we put what we learn into action. So sit back and soak it all up and over to you, Pauline. Thank you. Thank you, Julie, for the introduction. So, and I'm very happy to be with IATC and M. Effectively, I was the first accredited master coach in the region yeah. from IATC and M as well. Congratulations. So, uh, it was years ago, and I'm very happy to be here and share the knowledge. As you said, I enable people and businesses to get unstuck and reach and swift shift to their highest potential. I am here today because uh, out of my 11 years of experience as an entrepreneur, I built many businesses and I learned throughout the process as well. So I've been in the shoes of coaches who are, who are starting their business or who are working on their business at a different stage. And the world is crazy now. Uh, crisis all over, uh, pandemic hit. Competition is fierce from qualified and non-qualified coaches, to say the least. So we call it qualified and non-qualified. And people and coaches feel really not comfortable in, in some areas when building their business. And the people who are listening to this, I know that they have so many questions. They, they are facing those that everybody is a coach. Uh, how are you qualified? How will you help me? And all of this, I've been there, and they 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 seem to know it all, but effectively at one certain point in time, we're all guilty of not taking the right action. So today, what we're gonna explore is really what stops us as coaches, because throughout being mentoring coaches for a long time, I know that this is a key point that stops us as coaches. And what I want to before we start is really with our participants and the people who are watching on the live stream is really to imagine if now you have your six-figure coaching business. How will that feel? So I want you to grab your pens and papers and really at least list six emotions that your six-figure coaching business will give you. Because you can get there. Definitely. <laughs> and really, those emotions that you're writing now, those feelings, I want you to keep them inside of you and remember that really whatever you write, you invite. So you're inviting your six-figure six coaching business because you're writing it. And this is very important. So uh, we'll keep those and we will go in because I know we're very tight on time and I'll try to cover as much as we can really with the time that we have. And I know I've tackled social entrepreneurship. And when we say social entrepreneurship, we think of 
solving environmental issues. We think of solving these kind of stuff. But coaching is a social entrepreneurship. And what people don't know is that social entrepreneurs, if by definition, are innovative, resourceful, and results-oriented people. They have these three things. Those individuals are really willing to take the risk and effort to create a positive impact in society through their initiatives. So it's a force for good. And isn't it what coaching does? It is like that. Coaching is nothing but a social entrepreneurship. Nothing but a social entrepreneurship because social entrepreneurs have an impact and coaches have a big impact. Once you coach one person, you have a ripple effect on the direct environment around them and the bigger picture, the bigger environment as well. So effectively by coaching one person, you're not affecting the life of one person. You have automatically as a coach a ripple effect of impacting others indirectly. And this is what is the purpose of social entrepreneurship. Social entrepreneurship is impact. And the problem that happens is that when coaches graduate or when they are at a certain stage in their business or whatever, they tend to forget that coaching is a business. It's not a hobby. So we tend to start coaching one-on-one -on -one and we go with the flow and we really forget that coaching is really a business and it is a very impactful business. And it is one of the most impactful social entrepreneurship. So we need to shift in our, in our mindset, the idea that I am just a coach. No, I am not just a coach. I am a social entrepreneur with impact on every life that I touch and their lives as well as whatever they touch. So this ripple effect of coaching, it takes a lot to build a coaching business. And I'm going to share my screen to help the visual people so we can, I'm going to move here. Okay, really what people think that coaching, having a coaching business is choosing a market, organize your curriculum and packages, your training, activate your branding and sales processes and communicate your content and then we celebrate. So really in the back of their head, this is what people think that this is a coaching business. Well, the news is this is not a coaching business. This is part of the coaching business. So effectively, what I like to draw it always is the pie chart, which is a very simple pie chart. A coaching business is you as a person first because you are providing a humane service. It's the business processes and your methodology as a coach. So it's not only about the steps that we mentioned before choosing a market, niching or not niching, what packages, am I doing six, six sessions or 12 sessions? How am I pricing the session? Is it one-on-one? -on -one? Yes, it is part of the business. It is the methodology, but it's not the business. And this is why the purpose of this masterclass today is really to shift the mindset of coaches into really thinking strategically into this pie, which is, you are the core of the business. Then you have your business. Then you have your methodology. And the business is the processes, your clientele, your, uh, your needs, all of this. And your methodology, what are you going to do? The training programs, is it one-on-one? -on -one? Is it one-to-many? And all of this. So shifting from the one, two, three, four, this is what I'm going to do as a coach. To really thinking at a different level and the core of coaching is really the coach. You are the heart of the business and this is what matters. And we're going to cover this in a while. But I want to tell you here that when, when we talk business, okay, it's all about purpose, positioning, and presence. It so happens that they are P's like my name. <laughs> but, <laughs> and P's, it's Pauline Oya. But effectively, it's purpose, positioning, and presence. 
And the purpose is not, if you think about it, it's the process that you, you, you do it with your clients, which why you do this and their purpose, finding their why, and we're going to talk about. Positioning is how you position yourself in the market, whether you position yourself as a coach or am I a business. And you would see that being a business is what will get you to the six-figure coaching business. If I believe I'm only a coach doing one-on-one, -on -one, then this is what I will get. So my positioning in the market is really important. And presence, I can't stress on presence because presence is not only on social media. When coaches fail to show up in networking events, in their community, in at university, talking to people, networking, and showing that they exist because in the big wave of everybody is a coach, not as I, as I mentioned before, not really a qualified coach. They may be or they may not be, but let's take it for the simplicity. Everybody is a coach. So the market is buzzing with people. It's buzzing with people who go on social media, who try to network, and as a coach, your presence is crucial because people will don't have a crystal ball that tells them, listen, Julie is a coach, Aline is a coach, Brenduza is a coach, Elsa is a coach, or whoever is a coach. They don't have this. You have to go out there for the people to know of your existence. So presence is crucial. It is mandatory. And it's not about sharing what other people are saying. It's about having a message. And this is what I've seen through my experience mentoring coaches in their business is believing that if I quote this and I quote that and I quote Oprah and I quote I don't know who and I quote this, I'm providing valuable content. It's not what your clientele wants. They can find this content. What they want is a message that really what you as a coach, are you solving? So they want to understand what is the problem that you're solving, how you will solve it for them, regardless that we do not give advice. It's the methodology that we're going to use to help them and providing valuable content that addresses their pain area. This is when I'm acing my presence. Otherwise, I'm just copying whatever there is in the market and reposting and quoting and all of this, which doesn't work. It doesn't work. The market is big and there is a lot of potential for coaches. But as coaches, they tend to underestimate the power they have and the impact they have by only shifting their mindset to a mindset of a business instead of a mindset of a one man or a one, one woman show. It's not like that you're a business. And soon enough, if you want your business to thrive, then what you need to do is hire people. But at the beginning, I know that coaches struggle with this, but we need to think about it. And this is the purpose of the masterclass. And what I would like to focus about really in this masterclass is the you, and this is why I have it in bold here. It's the you, it's you, the coach who is the heart of the business. You are the heart of the business. If you exist, the business exists. If you don't exist, the business does not exist. Us being coaches, we know that when we talk about somebody, the most important thing in the you is the value. And when we think of values, and this relates to our purpose, the values relate to our purpose. So it, it, it's correlating with the three P's that are mandatory in the business. So really, in my coaching business, I need to answer the following three questions, and I would like you to write them down. What is important for me in my coaching business? So what is important for me in my coaching business? And then you can do the exercise and 
answer them in detail. The second question that needs to be answered, what is important for this business to thrive? Because you're not here just to survive, we're here to thrive and find. So these two questions will make sure that you discover your business values. And your business values will dictate how your business will go because it's a very big part of who you are. So when, once you need, you, you, you discover these values, you need to think of the following. What beautiful human experiences do I want to have as a founder of this business? What will help me grow and become the man or woman I want to be in the business? And the third one is, in what way can I contribute to others and to the world as a whole? And this brings us to the social entrepreneurship one. So really as a coach, it's about creating these experiences Growing and when I grow as a coach, then my my clients grow as well. When I contribute, then I am a social entrepreneurship. So you really need as a coach to understand yourself as a business owner, not only as a coach. A business owner, a coach with a thriving business. So shifting the mindset of I am just a coach providing a service. It's really shifting our mindset into this bigger thing that is my coaching business. And I know I've been there before when I started my coaching business and everybody who's on the call or listening to this will, will, will resonate with the questions that I just put. Where do I start? Who are my target clients? Do I need? Do I don't need? Do I have, do I have to do any selling? And we know one of the biggest fears when we will discuss the fears is selling for coaches. They don't like to sell. So how will I market? How much money do I need to get started? And million other questions. And by first discovering my values, which is covering my purpose first as a business, then it will help me answer those questions. But without answering and getting clarity of what am I as a business, then I cannot continue. No business can thrive without clarity. So as a business, the, one of the biggest components is really to understand who am I as a coach? Who am I as a business? What are the values driving this business? Who can I collaborate with to grow this business? And this all stems from my values. And as coaches, we know the importance of values when we're working with our clients. This is the first thing we work around. And we fall off when we're talk when talking about our business. So it has to start from within, which is us, and then to the world. So I need to discover my business values. And the biggest question that people ask as coaches in whatever stage of their business they are, am I a good coach? And I wonder how many people at whatever stage of their business they are, they contemplate on this question, am I a good coach? Am I failing my clients? Am I, are my clients succeeding? What am I doing? And this takes us to the belief, the big belief system that is very, very, very important because we know that values are there to drive our decision and beliefs drive our behavior. So if I have certain values that are not supported by my beliefs, my business is going to fail because my beliefs do not support my business. And being self-confident as a coach is really important and will tackle this. It is very, very, very important to have it, to have self-confidence as a coach. 
a coach without self-confidence cannot continue. We know that. So now that the first stage is to discover my purpose and my why as a business, not only as a coach, but my why as a business. Then the second step is to discover my belief. And the question, not the question, effectively, I, I want you to go back to your paper and pen and really write down all the fears, doubts, and uncertainties that you have on becoming a great coach or are stopping you from becoming the, the six-figure coach that you want to be. So really write down, I want you to write down the worst result that you can have in building your business. And once really, and this needs time. So what I suggest is really write the question and start putting the point. And really when we finish this call, take some time and start working on your business because it's crucial by answering the questions that we covered in the value and the answers that we need to have now in regards to belief. So the first thing I want to do is write out in detail the worst results I can get in building my business, my coaching business. And once you do that, I want you to grab another piece of paper this tray and put a very big smile on your face and write exactly the polar opposite of what you wrote on the other paper. Exactly the opposite of it. So what you don't want and what you really want, what has to happen. And when you're writing the best results, I want you to have a big smile on your face because this will really affect what you write. And remember when I asked you at the beginning of the call to write your emotions, recall these emotions that we started with our first call. When we have our six, seven figures business, whatever business you want to have, and really have these two papers. Once you have paper one with everything that can go wrong, I want you to destroy it, burn it, shred it, cut it up, whatever. And then again, rewrite the positive results. You wrote it first time. I want you to rewrite it again. Because remember what we write, we invite. So by writing it again a second time and having it twice, this will give us as coaches self-confidence. Because just think about it. If I am in the mental state of being a six-figure coach, I will act accordingly. And by writing it, it will make me act upon that. So I'll have self-confidence. And self-confidence is what makes you unstoppable as a coach and being able, and I'll go through the characteristics of the excellent coaches in a while. But I want you to remember that self-confidence is all about the self. And I did put them in bold here. Because we, we said that you are the heart of the business, right? So you are the core. And when I think about self, okay, I need to think first, regardless what happens, I need to be stable. So I need to take care of my mental health as a coach. Failing to take care of yourself as coaches is one of the biggest reasons of failing your business. So I need to have the emotional intelligence to have the stability through all time. Because you, whether you like it or not, shit happens in business. As much as we like to put it in purple and it's very nice, we go through ups and downs and everything. And things so we need to be stable and maintain our stability at all times. We need to be empowered to set and reach our goals first. So having the list of where I want to be and my six-figure coaching business be, I need to empower myself and work on myself to achieve it. 
The third thing is to do it with love because love is not only to love other people. It's self-love. So I need to respect myself and take care of myself and love myself and empower myself. So I have fun in the process. Otherwise, having this business will be boring like crazy. If it's not fun, if it doesn't have a positive impact on me and on the others, then why am I in business in the first place? Fun is, for me, it's one of my highest values, but I believe also that having fun in what you're doing takes you to another level of experience. So this is really important. And when we really think about the characteristics of coaches, okay, you need to have the drive. And the drive, what I mean is the self-motivation, which stems from your why, the purpose of your business. So we're taking it to the purpose. I need to be enthusiastic about it. It needs to be positive and it, it needs to make me continue. I need to take the courageous decisions as a coach. I need to make those decisions of really tapping into a market that is not tapped going to places that I haven't been, I have been going to, talking to people that I never spoke to. It takes courage because I need to work on my presence. And to work on my presence as a coach, I need to be courageous to show up. Like I show up for my clients, I need to show up for my business. And to show up for my business, I need to have the guts to make the decision as a business owner. And as a business owner, you take a lot of decisions, a lot of decisions. Definitely, we need to be empathetic and self-care. This goes beyond what I can stress on self-care for coaches and for business owners is mandatory. And this is how business owners avoid burnout. We need to take care of ourselves. We need to address our vulnerability and address them when we are emotionally intelligent. We don't have a problem in being vulnerable. It doesn't mean I go on social media and cry all day. This is drama queen. This is not being vulnerable. So let's separate this. And it doesn't mean everything that happens in my life, I need to go on social media and talk about it day in, day out. So I show that I'm vulnerable and I'm a human being. This doesn't work. So I need to address my vulnerability and change them into by, by taking care of myself, by being present, by having the drive and all of it. So I empower the grit within me. People talk a lot about resilience during the pandemic. And resilience is nothing but falling and going up, falling and going up. It feels like you're really on a trampoline and you ask yourself sometimes, really, do I want to be on that trampoline? Do I really want to be this resilient? And this is not what we want to have. What we want to have is really to have the grit. The grit is what takes you. When Julie introduced me, she said, I've experienced the third world <laughs> biggest explosion in the world. If I did not have grit as a person, I wouldn't have restarted my business from scratch. Because grit is nothing but passion. And when you have a passion for your business and perseverance and power to stand up again, those are passion, perseverance, and the power to stand up again. These are the major components of grit. No matter how you feel, if you're passionate about your business, then you will stand up and you will make it happen. And because we all know a business will have a season, sometimes we will have months of selling like crazy, enrolling people in our programs like crazy, and then another month totally dead. If we don't have the grit, the passion, the perseverance, and the power to continue, then we will stop at the first bottleneck. And this should not happen. So what I wanted to think really, if I want to build a great business out of those 
the drive, enthusiasm, courage, presence, empathy, empathy self-care, vulnerability, and grit. What characteristics do I have? And really circle them. And then I want you to think and pick the three characteristics that would be an absolute game changer for you to have if you don't have them already. So what needs to happen? Which ones do you need to have? And once you write that, I want you to write the action plan that you're going to take to have those characteristics. What needs to happen in you? What needs to change? What do you, do you need to learn? And what do you need to unlearn in the process? Because as business owners, not only as coaches, we need those drive, enthusiasm, courage, presence, empathy self-care, and all of this. We really need them. So when we're thinking about our business as a social entrepreneurship, we need to think as a business owner. Thank you, Cynthia, for sharing. Those are the ones that you have or the ones that you want to have? Uh, they're the ones I think that I have. And which ones are the really a game changer if you have them? I think self-care, a vulnerability, and the courage. I would like yeah. to have that, three. And what are you ready to do to have them? Because they're really crucial. This package is really crucial for the success of the business. I think I need to know exactly what, because you cannot not have courage at all. There are certain areas where you might not have courage in, for example. So I need to discover what these are and work on- uh, Definitely. Uh, work on myself, I think. Definitely, thank you, Cynthia, for sharing. Definitely, because if you think about it, it doesn't mean we don't have them at all or the enthusiasm, presence, empathy, or whatever you mentioned, you have them all the time, they are present sometimes and sometimes they're less and the ones that you really think they're they're a change maker it's important for all of us to think really really what needs to happen because we have them all of these things we have them especially when people enroll in a coaching program they enroll for different reasons but one of the reasons is impact one of the reasons is self-development as well. So all these things are important. And it means that if I step up and I enroll and I want to become a coach, then I have the courage because I took the decision. I, I dived into a place where everybody says there are million coaches around the world and there is not enough work, which is totally a bluff because coaching is the fastest growing industry in the world. And after the pandemic, I think, I don't think anymore it's the second. I think it's the first. Because people more than ever need coaching and companies need coaching as well. It's not only the individual. It's the individuals within the businesses, the leaders within the businesses to adapt to the new normal, which is, I don't know if it's new or old, but to adapt to the new whatever we are they need coaching. They need to be empowered again because a lot of things happened in the pandemic. And many people, and I say all the time, coaching is nothing but reigniting the spark of people. And the pandemic came and really turned off the spark to some people. And we as coaches, having businesses and thriving businesses, we can reignite their spark. We can work with them to reignite their spark so you they can have whatever they want to have and more of. Further and faster. And we know through the coaching process, we can go further, faster, and sooner. And who doesn't want to go further, faster, and sooner? I think everyone. 
if you create a poll on all your social media, everybody wants a change. Everybody wants to have more money. Everybody wants to have better relationship. So everybody wants a certain change. And we are there to help them find the spark again so they can go into whatever process they want to do. So really a successful social entrepreneurship is nothing but an inside job that we do. Working initially on really our values for the business, our beliefs about the coaching business, and really putting them down into papers, which, which really, and in coaching, we learned that a belief is, we have it, it's like a tabletop, we dismantle the, the pieces, and we dismantle the belief. Why not forget about this belief and build another table? And let's build this table, this new table for our coaching practice. Build this new belief about our coaching practice that no matter what was there, once you build the new table and you practice it and you set a goal for it and you start taking action, you will get to the new table. And the new belief we all know we learn by repetition. So by repeating it and acting on it and taking the action on the new belief and this new tabletop that is sexier and fancier with a six-figure coaching business with impact, then we try to change things differently. It's not about demolishing what we have. It's taking our life to the next level, really shifting this mindset that I'm not just a coach. I have a coaching business and a coaching business in demand. It's not a hobby. I need to have a purpose, a positioning, and a presence, the three P's for it. And once I have them, and then I have the passion, the perseverance, and the power to continue, then I'm, I'm, I'm a, unstoppable as a business owner. This is what is needed. So really, this is what I wanted to focus on on the masterclass today, is really to give these small nuggets about Shifting our mindset from I'm just a coach to I'm a social entrepreneur. And you are entrepreneurs. You are building businesses. Coaches are entrepreneurs and they have very high impact on society, on the people and everything. So I would really would love to answer your question. If you have any questions about anything that I have covered. And I really, I always share this. Dr. Gallagher gold card because I love it. It's, I'm so happy and grateful that. So I, whatever you wrote on your vision for your business and your new belief, I want you to write it there on this gold card as it is in the present tense and it is happening. Because success is really an inside job. It starts from you, and as coaches, as business owners, it starts from you. And you can screenshot this business card, and you can have access to all my social media and everything. So you can take a photo of it, of this code, and then we can stay in touch. So I'll stop sharing my screen, and I'm ready to answer any question you may have. Wow, thank you. Gosh, you've covered so much. I've got cramps in my hand from scribbling it all down like a schoolgirl here. Um, I mean, I, I found it personally, I mean, I'm going to invite questions now. But I found it personally very impactful and I hadn't really realized what sort of associations I must have with the term coach and how much broader and more powerful I felt when I saw it as a social entrepreneur. I don't know if that's you know, related to old fashioned ideas or, or gender, you know, about helping and for free and, uh, you know, women in particular wanting to be of service. But somehow, for me, it really does change the ball game when I think of it as social entrepreneurship, because, of course, we all know that we're there to, to help others. That is what's motivated us in the first place to to go through this accreditation. But still, I think you know, I always believe that things happen for a reason. For me personally, then, um, somehow I needed this. Uh, so I do thank you on a personal level very much. I mean, I found also on a, on a professional level, your, your uh, presentation outstanding, as in in the content, and it was all very natural, and it flowed beautifully, but also extremely practical. I thought the questions that you shared with us, um, and even if we've done that, I mean, I've been a coach for a, quite a long time now, 
you know, we need to go back to that. We need to go back to that. And, you know, maybe, you know, you need to redefine them. Maybe you need to take them one step deeper. Um, but it is all about, it is all about the values and that belief. And also what you said right at the beginning, you know, that we tend to have this idea that, you know, there are so many coaches out there. And that's where I was. I was getting a bit like, oh, you know, you know, it was fine in 2009 when I did my accreditation. Then I seemed, you know, quite, you know, new. Now every second person is a coach. But it's not true. First of all, they don't have the, 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 all the same resources and they don't run it as a business. And nobody does it the way that I do. And what you've just said about an increased need for coaches since the pandemic, I don't think I'd actually thought of it that way. So thank you very much for that. Now, do we have any questions? Feel free, uh, since we're live at least, I mean, there's the, the rest are on, on Facebook Live and cannot participate in the questions. But uh, Cynthia and Elsa, do you have any questions that you would like to put? Feel free to unmute yourself. Um, and yes, I have, I have a question. Uh, I yes, came in late, so I don't know if you actually covered this or not. I wanted to ask if, for example, you want to be a coach in a company, do you have to, I know that coaches have to have basic skills, but do they have to have different skills if you're going to work in a company uh, than having a personal uh, coachee or client? Definitely. There is a difference between life coaching and executive coaching. Uh, an executive is when you're working in any setup with executives that are in corporate, so employed by a certain company. So the whole ball game is different, Cynthia, because there are a, a different processes that come into place when you're working with teams and team coaches, when we're working with executives. Definitely, you need to have the initial skills of coaching, which are puzzling, listening, blah, blah, and all the models mm -hmm. that come afterwards, definitely. Yeah. But for executive coaching, you have certain specific models that you apply in the corporate world that are different than the ones okay. we use when we're doing working with one-on-one, -on -one, especially in mm -hmm. team coaching. And this is okay. why in, in, when we think life coaching, it's not life coaching. Only in the title life coaching, you have more than 54 niches to say mm. the least of coaching. So, but people for simplicity, they, they say life coach and executive coach. So life coach is anyone who deals with people on a personal level. Executive okay. when there is a company set up. And to mm -hmm. add on that, in life coaching, it's the person who hires you. In executive, it's the company. So you have a third player that comes on board, which okay. is the company. So in terms of contract, in terms of the reporting and all of this, you have a third party involved. Yes. And mm -hmm. this is why you need to get to know them so you don't fall in the, let's call it, misaligned with whatever. Mm -hmm. So there are things that you need to learn for executive coaching that will help you ace it and be able to work with executives better, whether they hire you on a personal or whether they hire you through their company. Okay. But companies okay. now, they need a lot. Does it change in terms of terminology? Because when a coachee wants to come and talk to you about certain things that are related to the work, you're going to have to yes. know the terms. So if you're just your executive coach, but you still have to know what the company deals with because an architectural company is different from a law company. So the terms are all different, right? Yeah, but if you're working with executives, okay, because in coaching, this is what differentiates a coach. I don't know, are you a coach? I'm practicing to become one. Okay, so, okay. All right, so effectively, you know the difference, Ben, between coaching and mentoring. So the mentor is a subject matter expert. The coach is not a subject matter expert, but in executive coaching, people to hire an executive coach, they prefer that to somebody with an executive background. So a corporate background, this is the tendency. Okay. But it doesn't okay. mean if I coach a CFO, I need to understand all the CFO terminology because I'm not okay. working on the process. I'm working with the person. Okay. So it's different. Okay. okay. So the questions will much. still be the same, right? The questions, you know, the the the, the, the why is this important to you and, and whatsoever, those will be the same. And from that point of view, you don't really need you personally to know how 
whatever product it is that they make works, you would need to know why it's important to them and what it is that they want to achieve through it, right? And that's all the very, the basic human needs, which, you know, the, the company needs to go through as well, I suppose. Definitely. And it's about uh, the tendency for corporates is to hire somebody with a, a corporate background because they want somebody who understands how things happen in, yeah. in a corporate background, politics and culture and all of this. But if somebody comes from a different background and doesn't understand all these things, they will have a second thought about hiring them. This is why when somebody tells me I want to work with executives, I always ask them about their experience in the corporate because it matters. It matters in terms, not for the coaching process, the coaching process, the tools and everything you can learn. It's about the perception of the companies hiring a coach that will affect their decision. So if I apply as a person with a corporate background, let's say, and Julie, you apply with a non-corporate background, I have a higher chance of being hired by the company. That's it. Yeah. Because of the general perception that they, they need them to understand the the terminologies, the culture, the things like that. So this would be. No, I totally agree. Yeah. Does that answer your question, Cynthia? No, I think so. Okay. I mean, what what, what would you say, um, uh, Paulina, is the main ingredient? What what holds us back the most? I think what holds us back the most is how we perceive ourselves, right. others, and the world around us. Yeah. It boils down to three things. It, it's really about the self. It starts with the self because we're driving this business. Right. So, and in coaching, it's not about, and this is why the difference in the programs are crucial. It's not about going through a program that takes you three days into the processes and you're a coach. This is not how you become a coach. How you become a coach is by working on yourself first. And then you work on others because there is something that I always say, it all starts with the person. It all starts with the coach. If I can learn the tools, but I will not be able to practice them properly if I did not unpack, I did not work on myself, remove the luggage that I have. I cannot go into a coaching session with my luggage on my back. So really, and this is the luggage that stops me in performing and outshining as a coach because of the luggage that I'm carrying. So the self-work in coaching is really important. It's super important. And definitely the system, the processes, everything else, yes, but also coaches working on themselves, always learning, always improving, always growing. How they go to the next level personally. I've been, for example, a master coach for ages. I always learn. Yeah. Every time I learn something new, I, I, two days ago, I graduated with a neuroencoding program, which is very similar to NLP, but it's because it's, it's the new approach and it has different things. Even if I'm a master NLP, I did a role because I thought there is, there are some things that will help me and work, working better with my clients. So right. as a coach, I really work on myself. And this is very important for the coaches. The certificate that you take is just the beginning. And then it's your growth voyage, not journey, because journey is a never-ending journey. Voyage mm. is something that you finish, enjoy, celebrate, like I celebrated yesterday, and then you start and you take another voyage. So really taking these, voyages along the way that will make all the difference for you as a coach and for your business for your business to grow you have to grow you see ceos of big companies they don't sit all the time in their offices they go network learn do stuff all of this so they grow with their business and this is really crucial yeah i think elsa had a question uh, hi, hi, Julie. Hi, Pauline. Thank you for this uh, amazing uh, quick presentation. Uh, it's refreshing. I miss those. I uh, recently graduated <laughs> with Pauline, actually, Julie. I'm her ah. student. Yes. If I may say. Just Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. And I'm working on, uh, I'm working on um, building my business. So this was very interesting. Uh, I, I really love the 
social entrepreneurship uh, connection with being a coach um, because really it has been I have trying to connect been connecting the dots to get to this new shift I'm a financial advisor initially and I worked as private banker and I have recently shifted and I've always wanted to do an impact and so thank you so much for this um, uh, this social entrepreneurship uh, connection with being a coach. It, it makes a big difference for me. Thank you so much. Thank you, Anita. Thank you. <laughs> and it is true at any stage. I mean, it's lovely to have two, you know, starting up now and, and all that, you know, defining who we are, what do we want, you know, what's our message. Uh, but it, it is so important at every stage. It really is. And, and I loved what you've just said, Pauline, about, you know, First of all, we change, you know, we grow, we discover more things each time we take it to a different level. And it's what makes that we walk the talk. And I think that until we really do have total clarity on, on you, as in me, as in us, you know, our own person, and why are we doing this? What is our message? We can't then get out of our own way. So, I mean, it's a question of it's on the one side, walking the talk, you know, really, truly knowing how it works, how, how a client might experience the tool or whatsoever from having really done it. You know, if we expect our clients to really sit down and take time to do, for example, these exercises you've just told us and to not just scribble as in two seconds, OK, done, shut the book. It's, it's to really see it as, as a way forward. And then it enables us to get out of our own way in a session, because, of course, we can't be clouded. I mean, I went through a divorce about 10 years ago. Um, and for a while, I stopped coaching because you know, lot, lots of things were bringing back and I, my head was just too full of then my story kept popping up. And I thought, no, you know, I want to be totally 100% there for the client without bringing it to, oh, yes, that reminds me that. Um, so it is that it's really knowing yourself so that you can be better of use to others. Definitely. And the importance what you mentioned, Julie, is really it's an, it's an exercise that we always do and very often because we grow as people. And when we start, when you started your business initially 10 years ago, you were a person and you grew. Mm -hmm. So your, your values changed and evolved. Your, your beliefs evolved through it. So like business owners, they go on retreat to strategize for their business on a yearly basis and, and mid-year and they do their performance indicators and all of this as coaches as well. Once we decide that this is a business, not a hobby, I'm doing it just a side job on my role or whatever to have an impact and I'm social and I want to help. Once this mindset shifts to the level that this is a business and really once you see it as a business, it shifts all your mindset, it shifts how you handle it, it shifts your beliefs around it, your values, what is important for you as a person. If I'm doing all the coaching or me as with shift coaching and consultancy, it's a totally different ball game. Right. Uh, you need to revisit those values. We need to revisit those beliefs and see what is empowering you. Something might have been empowering you in the past and it's not anymore because you grew. Yeah. So it was at that point in time, it was very empowering, but it was the version. 3.0 that you are today, it's not empowering as it was. It's normal. Yeah. So you need to level those beliefs, upkill them to the to the next level so they support your 3.0 version because we're right. growing. We're not staying and stagnant. And this is why coaches get stuck. And this is what I've learned because when I graduated as a coach 12, 13 years ago, there was nothing that told me how to run my business, what do I do with my certificate, nothing. It was all by trial and error, but working with coaches and being a mentor coach and having a coaching company made me learn all these things. And really, success leaves clues, guys, for all the coaches. We all know that footprints leave clues. So yeah. really, look at a coach that is successful. See what they have done, model them. Model what works for you. You don't have to be copy-paste model what works for you, take from their recipe what works for you, and then apply it. Get mentor. Get a business mentor as well for your coaching. Get coached as a person. What I really ask so many coaches, are you being coached? And they say no. And I say, why is that? You're, you're doing something that you're not experiencing yourself. So how is that? 
So really, we need to be coached. I have my business coach. I have my mentor. I, you need to be surrounded with the right people to build a business that is a thriving business that you can sustain. This is not a hobby and I'm going to, if I go, then the business will go. No, you're going to leave a legacy. You're transforming people's yeah. lives. You're helping them. The igniting, so you have an impact. And, and to ask you go. the right questions, right? I mean, we need somebody to ask the right questions to push us forward. And uh, we can't do that ourselves. As I was just saying, the impact of what you've just done now and those questions, we don't ask ourselves them. And also, I was just thinking, you know, we're talking about social entrepreneur and we, of course, change. So we do need to continue this working on ourselves, plus, you know, technology, tools, change. But also, if we're talking about, you know, social entrepreneur, society changes. Look, look what we've just been through. I mean, just with with COVID, you know, none of us four years ago would have dreamt it even possible, you know, that our governments would make us stay at home or wear a mask or whatsoever. It was all those silly over the top films that were on television. None of us could relate to that. So you do also need to be on top of that as well. Well, look, thank you very, very much for this. I mean, do you use social entrepreneur as a term when people say, what do you do? Do you say I'm a social entrepreneur? Yeah, we do. With my intro, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'd like to call myself because a social I, entrepreneur. Yeah. No, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you to all of you for listening. Um, I hope you've been taking notes. And if you haven't, I very much suggest you go back and listen to it again on the IPCNM site uh, and really write down those questions and carve away some time to actually answer them. You know, we're investing in ourselves here. Um, and it's not just a question of listening to a masterclass. It's literally, you know, like Pauline was saying afterwards, an action plan. What are you going to do? Uh, with that information you've gathered today. So add it also in your CPD log. You might think I'll do that later. But again, it's one of those things which we will then not do. So I suggest switch off, write it all down now before you forget about doing it entirely. Pauline, thank you very, very much for having inspired us here today. Hope to have you back some other time on another topic. And all the best to all of you. Bye-bye. Have, have a lovely evening. Bye. 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 Thank bye. You. bye. bye.